As parents of children with special health care needs, you know your child best. You are their strongest advocate. Here at the Parents Place of Maryland, we support and empower parents year round to make and affect change at a community and systems level. Today, you are going to learn how sharing your lived experience and personal stories and investing in skills development can make you an even stronger advocate. There are two types of advocacy where you can make a difference. The first is community. Community advocacy is personal. It is about defining your community and figuring out how you can make a difference in your personal community. When you think about your personal community, think about where you live and what opportunities there are for involvement. Personal community can mean your city or town, your local school system, or even your faith community. And as you probably know, there are multiple opportunities to get involved in your local community. You can serve on a local transition council, local care team, a disability agency board, an advisory committee, or something else. The second type of advocacy is systems advocacy. Systems advocacy is where policy is developed and implemented. It is also where financial investments are made. Systems advocates can affect change at the state and or federal level. You don't have to be a professional advocate to affect change at the systems level. Some examples of how you can engage in system advocacy include joining a consumer group that reviews and looks at changing policies, a commission that advises a state agency, a council that advises an organization or a nonprofit board. A major benefit to systems advocacy is that you can help make a difference for other children with special health care needs. You can also help increase funding for programs and services. This form of advocacy includes using your voice to testify on an issue and establishing relationships with your elected officials. Now that you understand that there are two types of advocacy, community and systems advocacy, the next step is figuring out how you can take your passion and knowledge and use it to use it as a powerhouse for change. You do this by serving. However, we know that choosing when and where to use your voice can be overwhelming with countless opportunities to choose from. And the fact is you have limited time available. There are many different types of groups. There are boards, task force, committees, advisory groups, work groups, evaluation groups, and many more. So where do you start? You start with identifying what issues are most important to you. Then ask yourself, do I want to make a difference in my personal community or at a systems level or both? Think about the needs of your child. What are the gaps in care that you or they have experienced? What type of changes are you most interested in? You can then marry your personal advocacy experience, your personal knowledge, with the issues you want to address your passion to find the group or groups that will help you make a difference, make a change at the community or systems level. Before you start any sort of advocacy effort, you need to get to go over a checklist. Do you have the time? Seriously, we must ask ourselves this question. And then the next slide, we will go over a tool that can help you assess if you have the time to take on a new opportunity. So many times we as family members care so deeply and want to make things better for all families that we tend to say yes when maybe we should say no. Now, if you do have the time, you need to prioritize which group and which request are the most important to you. Lastly, you need to learn the skills needed to serve on groups so that you have the opportunity to make the biggest impact to truly affect change and make things better for families. 
It isn't enough to just be a family member and have passion. Those are important. It is the fire in the belly. It is the lived experience that probably no one or very few sitting around the table bring. The skills help us harness all the passion and all the power. In this slide, before we ask the question, do you have the time? Not meaning to be funny at all, but sometimes it's hard to answer this question. This tool is one we use at the Parents Place of Maryland to help prepare families for serving on advocacy groups. The tool is meant to help you identify what's on your plate and help you prioritize your commitments. As you can see, the vertical area arrow shows high time and low time, and the horizontal arrow shows high energy and low energy. To start, let's grab a piece of paper and draw these two lines. Now think about everything you are currently doing with groups. Write down each of your commitments and think about how much time and energy it takes for each. One by one, does the group require a great deal of your time or very little? Is it requiring a lot of your energy to be on it or very little? Now ask yourself these questions for every group you are involved with including groups that aren't related to special health care needs or disabilities. For each group, write them down in the quadrant they fall in. If it is a group that is in high time and high energy, it's going to be in the top right corner. If it is a group that is high time and low energy, it goes in the bottom right corner, and so on and so forth. Once you have finished, look at, look at the chart. This should let you know quickly, do you have the time? If you have the time, say yes. If you don't have the time, but the request to join the group is important to you, then maybe look at what you are currently doing and adjust. Give something up or shift the amount of time or energy you're investing in something else. This is a nice way of giving you a visual representation of all the work you are doing related to your advocacy work. It is one thing to be passionate about making a difference and getting, in, getting involved. It is admirable, and we definitely need the family voice. We are the ones using the service, so we should be at the table to make sure our voice and the voices of others are heard. But we really do need to learn the skills so, so that all of our passion is really moving toward a change that makes things better for all children with special health care needs. As I mentioned earlier, there are many different types of groups. You have to figure out which group is the best fit for you with your time, your interest and passion, a committee, a task force, a board, an advisory group, for example. And then you need to understand the functions of the group. How often does the group meet? How is it run? Telling your story, this is a balancing act. Our story is always important, but when you are serving on a group and your story is to move the work forward or the issue forward, and it should be used to lift up all families' voices who are experiencing the same issue or dilemma. It isn't only about our own situation. Telling your story is an impactful way and useful skill to learn. Last, but certainly not least, is data. When we do this work, emotions are important. It is the passion and heart of the work, but decisions need to be based on data. Data is cr critical to assisting our work with children. Timely and accurate data can be one of the most important tools as it can make a case more persuasive. To assist you in this endeavor, to find and use data you want or need, use the three-step process. First, define your purpose. Why do you need the data? This can be to illustrate a need, reduce uncertainty, inform public opinion, 
prove to others what you already know in your day-to-day -day experience? Based on your purpose, what data do you actually need? Do you need people data, age, race, gender, event dates, births, death, things data, places, and organizations? Step two, you need to find the data. Start your search with the Census Bureau. The Census Bureau is a source of social, demographic, economic information. Census data is used every 10 years for distribution of representatives among the states, but it is also used for many other policy purposes. Some other resources are the American Fact Finder, FedStats, FirstGov, and the Annie E. Casey Foundation, even a university. Universities can be a resource for data. Contact a nearby university and ask for their research bureau. Step three, now we need to explain the data. To understand the data, you need to present it in a form that best presents your case. Remember, the visual is more powerful than the audio. As you calculate the figures, put them in charts or maps to show trends, patterns, progress, or differences. When explaining your data, do the basics. You do not need to be a statistician. Data can be a powerful tool in your efforts for advocacy. Take the time to explore the data sources available to you and practice using data to make your advocacy even more compelling. This just scratches the surface about advocacy and the skills to effectively serve on groups.